We are expecting the district attorney to give another update in regards to Burham's capture and the status of that investigation. Joining me now, retired police chief Stan Kephart. Uh, he is from Phoenix. Uh, thank you for being with us, chief. I still can't wrap my mind around the fact that he was able to get out how he did using a string of bed sheets, which he now doesn't have in his possession. And they basically watched him go. What do you expect to learn from this investigation? What are your biggest questions as we await? Thank you for having me on, Marnie. And the first thing I would like to know is what the staffing level is like at the facility that he escaped from. Um, across the nation, uh, funding has become a problem for law enforcement and regrettably uh, one of the first hit of custodial environments. As a former under sheriff, this was a problem uh, when I was under sheriff with the facility that we had, uh, the, the staffing and the training were the first areas that were hit within the sheriff's department uh, in that regard. So that's one of the things that I'm uh, curious about. Uh, this is not an, a unique or unusual escape. There have been escapes using bed sheets uh, going back uh, when I was uh, on the street, which is a long time ago, but uh, these kinds of things do happen. I would like to know about the intake uh, of this uh, person. He obviously uh, should be considered an escape risk uh, for the crimes that he was uh, in a county facility for. Uh, so I want to know what was done uh, in that regard on intake to uh, uh, deter him from escaping. Those would be a couple of things I'd like to start with. In addition to staffing issues, they are investigating whether he had help from inside or somebody outside the prison. Um, how often does something like that happen? Uh, that is something that we face uh, almost on a, every escape basis is that you will have Confederates uh, uh, on the outside that will help provide uh, food, clothing. Uh, it doesn't appear, though, that in this case, preliminarily, that that is the case. Uh, by reason of the fact that he had uh, on jail clothing, uh, he apparently uh, he had a nine day run here uh, and uh, looked tired and, and, and haggard uh, when they captured him. It doesn't look like he had contact from the outside. Right now, he's considered high risk. He's shown the propensity to escape. How will be he be treated now that he is back in custody, Chief? Well, my understanding is in the Buffalo facility, which is a pretrial maximum facility, and he's in a pod configuration by himself. He would be in, in one of the pods. Um, he's not going to be in general population or uh, the, in the open uh, Bay Area. Uh, he will be stripped of uh, all uh, things that he could harm himself with or uh, could facilitate uh, an escape. Uh, and he will be very closely watched. Uh, I don't know if he's suicidal, uh, but they will do cell checks on him uh, frequently. Uh, and his uh, action behavior and conduct will be monitored very closely. I would have concerns when he's taken uh, to trial. Uh, there will have to be precautions for that, uh, that that are set in place. And typically, this kind of facility has the, has the equipment and the training and the staffing to, uh, to do that. So uh, I think they'll be able to handle this. Right. And making adjustments um, now that vulnerabilities have again been revealed in yet another escape. Uh, Chief Stan uh, Kephart, thank you for your time on this. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.